If you have your Bibles this morning, or your mobile device, if you want to open them up to the book of Psalms, chapter 34, we're going to be reading one verse this morning. Psalms chapter 34, verse 18. It reads like this. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He rescues those whose spirits are crushed. This morning, I want to talk about God loves broken things. Amen? Let's bow our heads in a word of prayer. Father, we come before you, Lord, and we thank you, God. We thank you for another Sunday where we're able to congregate together, Lord, and fellowship and break bread and everything else that goes with a, a Sunday service, Lord. And God, first and foremost, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for saving our souls, Lord, and giving us another day, God, a fresh breath of life to be able to serve you, Lord. God, I pray that you would take full control of this service, God. God, anoint me, God. Use, my God, these words, God, to land on good soil this morning, God. God, and I pray for any person right now that may be struggling, Lord, in advance, God, that you would just speak directly to their hearts, Lord. God, we pray and we love you. In Jesus' name we say, amen and amen. Come on, let's give Jesus a hand, clap of praise. <clears throat> so this morning I wanted to speak about God loves broken things. You know, it's a brand new year and we're in 2023. And how I many know that two weeks have already gone by, right? And time just seems to be flying by. Tell your neighbor, time's flying by. And I know that many of us in this new year, we, be, we made, a, you know, resolutions. How many of you made resolutions? Let me see your hands that you made resolutions. You made some kind of goals. We got anybody made goals for this year? Like, I got some goals, financial goals, personal goals. How many of you said, you know, I got some things I want to accomplish? How many of you said that this year is going to be the year that I go to Mexico or I take a trip overseas? Any of that here? How many of you going to buy a house this year? How about that? About a house? You're looking to buy a house this year. What about a brand new car? What about a bicycle with two pedals? Anybody? How many, how many just looked in the mirror this year and said, this year was going to be the year that something was going to change? Right? So this may be the year where you're walking into a new year of vision, a new year of opportunity, a new year where you're saying, I'm not going to be the same person that I was last year. I'm not going to go through the same things that I went through last year. I'm going to accomplish more than I did the year before. Right? But how many know that it's hard to do that? when you're all broken up inside. Can I hear you say amen? Because sometimes how we look in the mirror isn't a reflection of how we feel on the inside. See, some of us know how to paint the picture real good. How many of you put on your Sunday's best this morning? Right? How many of you couples looked in the mirror and said, we're going to match this morning? The worship team looked like they was on point, right? They followed the whole, the, the whole structure for this Sunday in, in colors, right? They came matching, right? Because I mean, you know, there's power in unity. There's something that takes place when everybody's got the same mind, when everybody's on the same platform, when everybody's preaching the same thing. But it's not easy when you're going through something to fit in where you don't feel like you fit in anymore. When I look at this context of Scripture, here in the book of Psalms, it talks about the Lord is close to the brokenhearted. So I want to let you know this morning, if you feel broken or if your heart is broken or if you feel like your life is in dismay, God is with you. Tell your neighbor, God's with you this morning. See, something that is broken is designed to be repaired, not discarded. Hello, somebody. Something broken is designed to be repaired. Don't you thank God for the ministry of Victory Outreach? Right? Because I look at a reflection often myself in the mirror and I say, I'm not the same person I used to be. Here it is going over 25 years later of being around the ministry of Victory Outreach and coming through those doors as a young man and going into the men's home. I was broken. Can anybody reflect on that this morning? You came in a broken vessel with no direction, no plan, no purpose. Or maybe you're young this morning, and you may not have gone through what the person next to you is going through, but you're going through something. 
See, God never gives up on what he has designed. Quite often, we'll look at the hurting, and we may feel some type of way because we know where they're coming from, but it may be a little bit of work that we, we just don't want to take on right now. See, I know how I ended up in the men's home. My family didn't want anything to do with me anymore. Does anybody know what that feels like? To be disowned, to be outcasted, to be kicked to the curb. How many of you were the black sheep in the family? Hello, somebody. Am I the only one? There we go. I see some black sheep out there, right? So, you know, like when I, when I take a look at it, I, it's personal for me because I know what it's like to be broken. I know what it's like to be hurting. I know what it's like to not have no purpose. I know what it's like to not have no direction. I know what it's like to wake up and not knowing what I'm going to do for the next day to eat. Where am I going to sleep? What's going to happen with my life? I know what it's like to be hurting and feeling like I don't have no place in this world. Have any of you felt like that this morning ever in your life? I mean, know that God's in the restoration business. Do you hear me this morning? There's one thing about God. God knows how to restore. Because many of us, when we look in the mirror now, we can't even see what we looked like when we first came through those doors. We forgot what that looks like. But it's hard sometimes for people to work with broken people. That's why my family had to discard me because they just didn't have the capacity to work with somebody that was broken the way I was broken. And maybe sometimes when people come through the doors and, you know, couples and their marriages are just all messed up and they're just giving up on each other and, and they just don't know how to seek help. But how many knows that they could come in through the doors and they could come before the throne of God at these altars and cry out to God and God will give them the answer that they need to restore their marriage. God will give you the answer you need to restore your children. God will give you the answer you need to restore your family. Come on, somebody. God will give you the answer you need to bring restoration. <clears throat> Tell your neighbor, God knows what he's doing. See, we were designed to be repaired, not discarded. And many of us knows what that void feels like in our lives. Because we've been discarded. How many know that hurting people hurt people? Some of us, we've been bleeding on people all our lives. We've been broke and bleeding. And our scars never heal over. We never really come to the altar and confess and really let go of those things that are holding us back. Some of us have baggage that goes so far back and we don't want to let it go because it's the one thing that we're holding on to and we're hoping that one thing will keep us going and we don't even know what that victory will feel like if we just let go of whatever it is that, you know, is just there. It's really deep down on the inside, you know, something that's really pressed in that we just don't want to let it go. We hold on to it. We lean on it when we're not feeling good. We lean on it when we're going through something. We just add more on top of it like, oh, yeah, I, I was always told that I was never going to be anybody, that I was a nobody, so I'm going to lean on that. That's my personality trait that's in the gutter. And you haven't let it go yet. You haven't seen that there's life beyond your brokenness. You haven't seen that there's life beyond those things that you feel like you can't overcome. Because God has given each and every one of us the ability to be overcomers this morning. Right? The Bible said that God gave the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. Tell your neighbor, I used to be a fool. But now I confuse the wise. Because see, some of us, people can't even understand when they see us, how do we get to where we are right now? Quite often I find that as a topic of conversation in my job because when they look at where I came from and everything that I used to be, they forgot that, you know, when I gave my life to Jesus Christ, that old things have passed away. Hello, all things have become new, that I became a new creation in God. All they see is the rap sheet. All they see is the background check. All they see is the credit report. They don't see what the blood did. Hello, somebody. That the blood came in and it cleansed and it washed and it renewed and it restored and it it redeemed and it rebuilt. Hello, somebody, right? Because we were broken at one time, but God came in like a flood and he raised us up and he put us in a place where we'll look like we're all nice and shiny and polished. Like, look, I know how to take something broken and restore it to where it's supposed to be. Hello, come on, give your hands. Give Jesus a hand, clap of praise this morning. Tell your neighbor, God knows what he's doing. 
So I want to look at two things this morning that God needs to do in order to get us from always looking at that we're broken into looking that God had us here for a reason. The first thing I want to talk about this morning is a broken heart requires healing. Hello. A broken heart requires healing. How many of you have had your heart broken? Hello. I'm not talking just about a relationship, though. How many of you feel like you broke someone's heart? Maybe you were a disappointment to your family. Maybe you were, you have children that are a disappointment right now. They're not living up to the standards that you may be setting for them. Maybe you had a marriage that didn't work out, a relationship that didn't work out, a situationship. Hello, somebody. We got to add it all in there right now, right? We don't know what it is that you may be going through. Maybe you have siblings that you no longer are connected with because, the, you know, that, that kinsmanship, that, you know, that family closeness is no longer there. I come from a large family, so I know what that looks like. I got five brothers and three sisters. Maybe you've done things in your life that you regret and you just don't know how to get past. And they hold you back because you have a brokenness inside of you that you just don't know how to overcome. Psalms chapter 147 verse 3 says this, He heals the brokenhearted and bandages their wounds. Who heals? Who heals? If you're broken, how many know that there's someone that could heal you? Because we don't know the pain that you're going through. I can't fathom what you see when you look in the mirror. But I can relate. I know what it's like to be a disappointment on all levels. I know what it's like to fall short on all levels. I know what it's like to be looked over or looked past. I know what it's like to be the one that everybody says, when they see me coming through the door. I know what it's like to bring disappointment. I know what it's like to feel ashamed. I know what it's like to cry late at night for no reason by myself. Am I speaking to anybody this morning? Does anybody relate to that? Listen, God takes your brokenness God will take your brokenness and turn it into a breakthrough. God will take your brokenness and turn it into the biggest breakthrough you ever had in your life. God will take your pain and turn it into power. Do you hear me this morning? Whatever it is you're going through, whatever pain it is you feel in the, outside, in the inside, God could take that pain and turn it into a powerful thing. Why is that? Because God loves to take our mess and turn it into the best message we ever had in our lives. Come on, give Jesus a hand clap of praise. <laughs> How many know that our mess is our message? That people come to you sometimes and just know that you'll, you can relate to them. See, I never want to get so far, you know, away from who I used to be that I forget that there was a time when I didn't look the way that I look right now. Hello, somebody. I don't want to ever get to a place where I forget that I used to have holes in my shoes. Hello, somebody. I didn't have no clothes. I didn't have no family that wanted me. I didn't have a job. I didn't have a job record. Hello, somebody. Right, that I didn't have two coins to rub together. You ever heard that term? I, I barely had one coin to rub. I remember having the paper bag, breakfast, lunch, and deal meal. Anybody ever had that here? Right, where you take like two or three chips and you throw them in one bag and you shake them up and it's like a surprise? You can't do that anymore. Like if you're, if you're messed up, those three bags are like $8. But that's when for a dollar you could buy three bags of chips and a juice. And that was my meal for like three days. Because I didn't have anything going for me. 
And I couldn't tell you why I decided to go right instead of left. I couldn't tell you why I didn't want to listen to what I was being told. All I know is that my life was messed up and I needed to see change because if something didn't happen, I didn't know if I was going to make it another day. And maybe you're here this morning or maybe you know someone that's sitting in the same boat and you're saying, you know what, God, if you don't give me a word this morning, if you don't give me something to stand on, if you don't speak to my soul, I don't know what I'm going to do for another day. Why? Because you're broken. How many know that it's okay to be broken? Because God loves broken things. See, God wants to take that broken that you have and turn it into brokenness. Hello, somebody. I say, what are you saying, Brother Nick? That there's a brokenness in God. Hello. There's a brokenness that happens with God that takes you to another level. I don't know about you, but there's times where I'm at the altar and I'm broken, but I'm not broken because of who I used to be. I'm broken because of who God's making me, who God has me to be today. I come to the altar and I get broken before God because I remember what I used to be like. And then all of a sudden, Jesus came into my life. He set me free from the chains of bondage. He broke those shackles. Hello, somebody. He began to restore me. He began to redeem me. He began to lift me up. Hello, is that you this morning where God took your life and then all of a sudden you look in the mirror, you're not who you used to be. You say, man, I'm grateful this morning that God raised me up to be somebody. So that brokenness, when you come to the altar, that you see sometimes you see people crying, you're like, man, oh my God, bendito, I feel bad for them. They're, they're crying, but it's not tears of frustration. It's not tears of, oh my God, I'm not going to do my life, but it's tears of joy because you know what it's like for God to come into your life and bring the plan of salvation. You're crying because he healed you. You're crying because he delivered you. You're crying because he gave you a hope and a future. Someone wrote this, said, Brokenness in God's eyes is being so crushed by the sin and darkness of this world that we recognize there's no place to turn but to God. There's no other place to turn but to God. I don't know about you, but... I thank God this morning for my salvation. Hello, somebody. I thank God this morning that I was, I was able to wake up and, and have a choice whether I wanted to drink coffee or not, whether I wanted to eat breakfast or not. Hello, somebody. I was thankful that I was get, able to get up in the morning and, and have a time of, to be able to get into prayer and begin to get into his word and begin to have communion with God. I don't know about you, but when I was broken, there was no communion with God. I didn't even know what that looked like. And all of a sudden now, because of brokenness and God being able to restore us, we have that opportunity. We have that grace where we could get before God and we could just have fellowship with him. I don't know about you, but sometimes you're there and you're praying and all of a sudden you feel God minister to you and you know that there's something different taking place when God begins to speak directly to your heart. How many of you have been at the altar? How many of you have been in a conference and you've heard the call of God cry out to you say, man, I'm not leaving this place the same because I hear God speaking to my heart. I know when we went to World Conference last year, it had been a long time that we had been able to go to a conference or to the World Conference. But I remember hearing the voice of God after every message. Why? Because when your heart's open, you allow God to come in whenever he feels like it. But you know what happens with a broken heart? It doesn't let nothing in. A broken heart needs healing. A broken heart needs surgery. And we have the master surgeon this morning. His name is Jesus. Come on, clap your hands for Jesus. It's important that we remember that. Sometimes we get so broken that we feel like there's nothing's ever going to change. And that's really not the truth. You know, the devil's the master of all lies. He probably lied to all of us at one point in time this morning. We felt it somehow like, oh, devil, you a liar. Right? On the way to work, arguing with your spouse, the kids not listening, you know, people not showing up on time. I mean, there's all kinds of things that trigger it, right? You stubbed your toe on the bed early in the morning, almost cussed. Am I, am I speaking to a different crowd? Right? I mean, know that we need healing to take place. We need God to come in and begin to heal us and 
begin to prepare us for where he's trying to take us. Because in order to get to where God really has us, we need a complete healing of the mind, heart, and the soul. See, there's another name for God in the Bible, and it's called Jehovah Rapha, which means I am the God who heals. But some of us need to take it more personal that God is telling you specifically, healing is what I am. Do you hear me? That's God trying to tell us something. God is saying, my name is Jehovah Rapha because healing is who I am. So if you're here this morning and you need God to mend your broken heart, you got to be willing to take the necessary steps for him to heal it. You got to come to God and say, God, you are healing and you're capable of changing me and making this heart new. Now, no one ever said that it was going to be easy, right? That's why we often bleed on people. That's why we often take our brokenness and we project it on other people. That's why some of us, we ended up taking on the same format that, you know, was, was at our, in our households where there, there was a brokenness in our, you know, our family, a brokenness in our parents' marriages, a brokenness in just how we were raised. Uh, many of us at one point in time probably told ourselves, I will never be the way my father was. I'll never be the way my mother was. I'll never treat my kids this way. But there was so much damage already done that we might not have went this way, but we went another way. If you don't allow God to come into your life and completely heal your heart, you're always going to be one step behind where God really intends for you to be. You have to allow God to come in and heal. You got to allow God to come in and restore. Because when restoration comes in, the devil got to watch out. When there's real healing, the devil has to be careful. See, because when you're really healed, there's nothing that's going to stop you from fulfilling the calling that God has for your life. Amen. Come on, give Jesus another hand clap of praise. <clears throat> the second thing I want to take a look at is not only that a broken heart requires healing, but a crushed spirit requires revival. Hello, somebody. A crushed spirit requires revival. You know, I grew up in, uh, in church for the most part of my life. <clears throat> And I came from a, a church that had a Pentecostal background. We always have these jokes that we tell. We used to come in the church and they would be in the midst of worship and all of a sudden, somebody would be coming around with like a milk crate full of, full of instruments. And I don't know what it was, man, but I would get excited. And I just wanted that, that, one, that one instrument called the Weedle, right? It's got like, looking like a hair pick and you just, you just, you just scratch it. But in my mind, it was the, you know, it was the greatest thing in the world. And they would pass them all out, right? The, the maracas. It was a Spanish Pentecostal church. And I, I'm telling you this right now. I had no clue what they were saying, but they were full of the spirit. Hello, somebody. They had the maracas. Anybody knows what the maracas are? Right? They had the tambourine, the weedle. They had these little cowbells. I don't know. There'd be one person hitting that cowbell all service. Bing, bing. <clears throat> there was engagement. It seemed like every service, they wanted revival to take place. They would get so excited. There would be, I think the worship was longer than the message. There'd be like 30 minutes into the worship. There was the same, the first song, the same song. I was like, man, we sang this song for like 30 minutes. And the whole 30 minutes, they were excited. The whole 30 minutes, they were in revival. The whole 30 minutes, they were playing the instruments. Why? Because their spirits weren't crushed. See, when you got a spirit that's open, that's not crushed, it doesn't matter what you're going through. When it's a time of worship, you're going to get yours. Hello, somebody. See, I, that's the one thing that I know that God gave us that we don't ever have to worry about losing is the ability to worship him in spirit and truth. Hello. 
That when it's a time of worship, I don't care what I'm going through. If I could just, you know, hone in on the worship, if I could just get a hold of what they're doing, if I could just start singing and just looking to God and start feeling him minister to me, and I could feel that brokenness come on me because I'm there worshiping God. And the Bible says those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And you're there, oh God, I worship you. I thank you for this time that I'm able to sing a song with you. And even though I know I don't got a voice to sing, hello, somebody, even though I know I can't hold a no, even though no, I know I'm not a musician, but I can sing unto the Lord. I can offer a, a sacrifice of worship, a, a sweet aroma to his nose. Why? Because my spirit's not crushed. I have revival taking place inside of me. That's why I like those old church hymns, those songs, right? There, there's revival in the church tonight. I used to love that. We used to have those revival services and everybody's running around. I got the Holy Ghost upon me right now. Why? Because when you're in the spirit of God, you forget about what was behind you. Hello, somebody. You ever come to church so broken, your, career, your spirit so crushed, like you didn't even, man, you couldn't even lift your head up high. You're just walking past people. They're like, hey, brother, hey, sister. And you're like, I don't got nothing to say because my spirit's crushed. Man, but then the worship starts. Hello. The special music's hitting. The altar cause when God's in the spirit and the spirit's moving inside of here. Someone said about a crushed spirit, it feels as if all the joy you ever had or had the potential of having was zapped from your being. Your self-esteem is decimated to the point that you are a mere shell of your old self. You know, when you're crushed, it's like you go backwards. When you have a crushed spirit, you're just not, you're just not who God designed you to be. Who did God design you to be this morning? When you woke up this morning, were you already defeated? When you woke up this morning, were you just right back to that broken place? When you woke up this morning, were you just crushed to the point where you had to force yourself to get out of bed to go to church? Are Sunday mornings a drag for you? Are Sunday mornings difficult for you? Are you not excited about having the opportunity of coming together as a church so that way you could get a hold of God, so God could speak to you and he could pour out? But you know what? That needs to take place in the morning. Hello, somebody. Because you should be getting up out of bed and say, you know, I'm not going to wait to go to church in order to get my worship on. I'm going to put on that music and I'm going to get before the Lord. And I don't matter what I'm going through, I'm going to worship him and I'm going to cry out to him. You have an opportunity before church to start revival. Tell your neighbor, you got to start revival in the morning. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 22 says, a joyful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be dried up bones no more. You know what happens with dried up bones? They get brittle. They break they turn into dust. But how many know that Jesus is the bone reviver? See, God wants revival to take place in our hearts so that it can be manifested outwardly in our walk. Your spirit's crushed and God's saying, listen, I got to put revival in you. I remember how I got here. I don't know about you, but I, I, I remember they, I grew up in front of the church. I remember they invited me to a drama, and I went to the drama, and they were inviting me to church, and then I just wasn't ready, and then the minute that I was ready, I remember I came, and I was talking to a brother, and I was like, man, you know, I was desperate, like, I just need to get to church, like, I'm, I'm running from the police, I'm running from the guys, I was running from everybody, everybody was chasing me at that time, hello, you ever been in that boat? Right, everybody's chasing me, I had everybody after me, I'm like, everybody wants me. So I remember I get to the I get to the reentry home and I'm knocking on the door. I didn't know it was the reentry at the time. I'm knocking on the door. I'm beating on the door. I wasn't knocking. I was beating on the door, and the brother man he took forever to come downstairs. I come to find out years later he just moves slow. It's just just who he is, you know. So he comes down the stairs and he opens up and I'm in a panic. I'm in you know I'm hysterical like man brother I need Jesus I need God I need Pastor Nick told me help me out and he's like calm down, it'll be okay man. God got you. He's like, let's go upstairs. I'm, I'm, I'm getting ready for church, but I'm, I'm worshiping God. You know? Go to church, man. There's revival on Friday nights. 
But I was so desperate. I'm like, man, look, I just need to get there, man. You don't understand. He's like, no, I do understand. And if God wanted it any other way, it'd be that way. So I just sat there. And the whole time he was in, the, he was in there singing, worshiping God, clapping his hands, excited. And I'm over there like, they're going to come knock on the door. They're going to come get me. And there he was in revival because his spirit wasn't crushed. You might have got up this morning and your spirit was crushed. But how many knows that you don't have to leave here the same way? Can I hear you say amen? amen? See, there's some things that grow inside of us or things that take place when we have a crushed spirit. One of them is we grow bitter towards the things of God. And it's very, very evident, right? When, when, when you start when having a spirit that's crushed and you're just not in tune with what's taking place, all of a sudden you start disconnecting. I've been there. I know what that looks like, so I could talk about it. <clears throat> you know, when, when things aren't just going your way. You ever, you, ever, you ever have things not go your way? Right? You ever get up and say, man, you ever go to work and you're like, this just isn't my day. Maybe it was a week. or Maybe it was a month. Like, you're at work and like, I don't know, even know if this is working now. Like, you go to work and it just all of a sudden your boss doesn't like you. Like, it's the week that he's going to pick on you for everything. You're at work and he's just nitpicking every little thing. You know? And you're sitting there and you're looking at the boss like if he's the reason why your life is miserable. And that's not really the case. You're there all of a sudden, it's the job that doesn't fit us. You ever notice how we flip the script? See, because a crushed spirit often looks for other things that are transpiring and not what we're going through. See, I learned to check the temperature with my boss I do the temperature check every day. I walk by his job. I walk by his office. Every morning, I come in, I do my routine. I go upstairs to my office. I go downstairs to a little kitchen. I make my coffee. I see if his car's outside through my camera. On my, on my office, I got cameras, everything. I, oh, he's here. So I, I do the walk by, and I usually, morning boss. And if I get it, hey, bud, what's going on? I'm like, oh, this is great. It's going to be a great day. And I come, hey, you got a minute? But if he just stares at me, and he says, hey, I know it's not going to be a good day. But just because he's having a bad day doesn't mean that I have to have a bad day. Hello, somebody. Amen. And maybe you woke up this morning and you see everything's going around you. is isn't going the way you want it to go. That doesn't mean that your spirit has to be crushed. You need to revive yourself and not be bitter towards the things of God. They're not always going to go the way we want them to go. So often God's saying, not saying yes, he's not saying no. He's saying wait. He's telling you to be patient. He's telling you to hold on just a little bit longer. He's telling you to not give up. He's telling you to, to you know, keep going in the right direction. He's telling you don't hang out with those people. He's telling you to don't go to that place. He's telling you to don't make that mistake. Don't answer that message. Don't call those old friends. He's telling you stay connected with me because I'm going to pour revival upon your soul and your life's not going to be the same. Stay connected. You disconnect from church. You disconnect from the source. I heard this a lot. Many people say this. Just because I don't go to church doesn't mean that I'm not serving God. But I've been in that boat. If you ain't, serve, if you ain't in church, you're somewhere else. More than likely, not where you're supposed to be. Another thing that happens is you lose intimacy with God. Because the farther you're away from the people of God, the farther you're away from the things of God and what's taking place, the harder it is for you to stay connected with God. I've seen it so many times, testimony and testimony and testimony of brothers and sisters coming and saying, man, I wish I would have never done that. I wish I would have never made that choice. I wish I would have just stayed plugged in. I wish I would have just listened to the pastor. I wish I wouldn't have leaned on my own understanding. Let me let you know that it's okay because God forgives. This morning, maybe you find yourself in a position where you're not as intimate with God as you used to be. How many knows that that could change today? That you don't have to leave here feeling the same way you came in. You could leave here healed. You could leave here revived. And you could leave here with purpose tonight, this morning. Psalms chapter 71 verse 20 says this. 
you have allowed me to suffer much hardship, but you restore me to life again and lift me up from the depths of earth. How many know that God desires to lift us up? Maybe you're here this morning and you need that boost. You need that extra lift from God. How many know that God can meet you right where you're at? And know that we're not the only ones. Sometimes we look in the Bible and we forget that, you know, there's a lot of men and women in the Bible that they came from the same kind of backgrounds. They came with the same kind of problems. They came with the same type of mentalities. They were going through the same things that we're going today. It was just a different time in the world. They, were, they have the same accusations that we have as when we go before God. Sometimes we forget that there's so many characters in the Bible that came with the same subtitles that we once had. The Bible says that Jacob was a cheater. Hello, somebody. He was broken. Look at Joseph, right? He was kidnapped. He was abused. He was left for dead. He was sold and traded in, in slavery. And look at that. He still looked out for his people. Look at Moses. He couldn't even speak. Oh, God, I don't have the right words. Or, God, I stutter. Or, God, it's, I'm not the right one. And yet God used them. Look at Rahab. She was a prostitute, and yet God utilized her to meet a need at a time when it was necessary. She did what God called her to do, and God blessed her and saved her family. Look at Gideon. He was afraid, and yet he rose up, and he took that army, and he did what God called him to do. Look at Samson, right? He was a womanizer, and yet he was there when he was doing, when he was on fire with for God, he was doing what God called him to do. Look at Noah. He was a drunk, and yet God used him to save the world. Look at Job. He lost his family. He lost everything that he owned. He went bankrupt. And yet not once did he complain about what God did. He kept on giving God all the honor and glory, and God restored them triple fold. Look at Elijah. He was suicidal. He was like, God, I just want to go and kill myself. I just want to eat this little bit and die. And like God said, no, I'm going to use you to bring revival. And the Bible says that a chariot came and took him off. Look at David. He was an adulterer and a murderer. Look at Jonah. He ran from God. Look at Naomi. She was a widow. She lost her husband, and yet God still aligned her for her family to be blessed. Look at Peter. He denied Christ three times. Look at the Samaritan woman. She was divorced, and Jesus told her, and the man you're with now is not even your husband. And yes, she took that message and told everybody, there's, a, there's a, a man named Jesus who knows everything about me that could bring salvation to this world. Look at Martha. She was always worrying about everything. She was a worrier. Oh, they're doing this. Mary's doing that. Lazarus dying. Like, what are you going to do? And God's always like, hey, be patient. I know what I'm doing. Look at Paul, the apostle. He was a Pharisee who persecuted Christians and then he became one. Hello, somebody. Even when he gave his resume, he said, ain't nobody like me. I'm the chief of all sinners. He had his whole resume built out. What does your resume look like this morning? You know what all these men and women in the Bible had in common with us? They were human. They were humans that needed God. They were broken men and women that needed Jesus to come into their lives. I don't know about you this morning, but I thank God for my salvation. Come on, give Jesus a hand clap of praise. As the worship team makes their way this morning. The one thing that I know that's truer than anything in this world is God knows what he's doing. And you may be sitting here this morning and you may be thinking to yourself, the situation I'm facing, my background, the things that I've done, the mistakes that I made, you may be thinking that defines who you are. But that's not the definition of who you are. The choice that you have today and every day of your life is a continual ability to take the necessary steps to come to God. Maybe you were broken, 
If you came in feeling broken this morning, your heart's broken, everything that you're facing in life has you in a place where you feel like there's no escape. And God's saying, I'm going to set you free and I'm going to heal you. Maybe you came in with a crushed spirit and you need God to light a spark. And you need him to create that revival inside of your life. You know what? He can do it. The only thing that's stopping you from getting to where God needs you to be at this morning is you. Or maybe you're online this morning and you're saying, you know, I could relate to that. Maybe you're online you're saying, I felt that way. God wants to touch your life as well. As we stand to our feet this morning. and begin to lift up our hands before